Alright guys, welcome back to Formula 1 news. Every day that goes past, it looks more and more likely that Ferrari will internally declare Charles Leclerc as their number one driver for the 2023 season. Not good news for Carlos Sainz, but could this mean if they do develop their car in his direction and favour him on strategy, is that their best shot of actually trying to beat Red Bull and Max Verstappen next season? And also, depending on what Mercedes are cooking up as well, hit the like button if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new as always, I would greatly appreciate it. Plenty to discuss. Firstly, a quick one here from Logan Sargent. Confirm confirmed his number for the grid next season. He's going to take up number two. The first time a driver's had that since I think Van Dorn for McLaren about four or so years ago. This was Leclerc's comment here to Bonotto after, of course, Bonotto announced his resignation. The reality is they basically fired him. But um, yeah, as we said yesterday, he jumped before he was pushed. But as Leclerc says, thanks for everything, Mattia. We spent four very intense years together, full of great satisfaction and inevitably moments that tested us. My esteem and respect for you have never diminished. We always had good dedication or full dedication to achieve the same goals. Good luck for everything. Interesting comments just because this part, right, um, you know, my respect for you has never diminished, has raised some questions and some doubts just because the rumour has it that Leclerc hasn't really been so happy about the state of affairs, understandably you could argue, over the last few months or so. And as such, now, you know, the possibility of a new team principal is maybe more attractive to Leclerc and his camp than um, Bonotto has been, let's just say. We can see that frustration here where Leclerc is talking just today about, uh, well, Red Bull, right, and how they had such a good car on the straights. They made a step and were basically as quick, if not faster in the corners at one point in the season. But as he says, we had a car to compete. When I look at the whole season, we had the performance to fight for the title. We just didn't do it right, saying that at the start of the season, certainly around circuits like Barcelona and, you know, Baku, when they had the pace advantage, that's when, you know, they fell off a cliff in terms of, well, reliability, but also strategy at other races as well. And um, even Leclerc says he still believed in the potential, but the strategy mistake in Monaco, the engine failure then the penalties that ensued as a result of that. Like, um, you know, he still believes, but he realised at that point that it probably wasn't going to be, and it was, of course, hard to accept. And, yeah, obviously frustrated about the way the season has gone. He also answered a question on whether, you know, exactly what's causing the performance gap between himself and science. And he doesn't say, oh, you know, I don't think there is one. He says, yeah, there is one. I changed a few things. The way I work, I was a bit freestyle last year. This year I was dialed in. You know, um, yeah, apparently he reckons in 2021 was getting kind of tired towards the end of the season. But this year, he, you know, he's been fully focused, trying to improve everywhere he can. And I do think Sainz is a great driver and has done a very commendable job this season at Ferrari, but in terms of, you know, who's got the real potential there to be a world champion as it stands, I think Leclerc is probably that guy. He might be missing a piece or two, but this is now the question. What happens next season at Ferrari? This season, they really haven't said much or tried to do anything really in terms of, you know, have a number one driver. Red Bull don't make it particularly, you know, it's not really hidden the situation at Red Bull. They don't say Verstappen's the number one driver but um, even as early in the season as uh, Spain, right, in Barcelona, they were effectively bringing the team orders in in round five or six of the entire season. So it's quite clear what's going on at Red Bull. Mercedes also don't, I mean, this season they didn't really need to have to just because none of the drivers were in the fights. And arguably, Ferrari, given Leclerc was going to be their number one guy, they should have given him priority. I'm sure he looks back at situations like Silverstone where, you know, the championship wasn't over, but it was kind of getting to that point. He was in the prime position to take the win. Sainz got the, the beneficial strategy there, but they pitted him, left Leclerc out on the hard tyres. Sainz then won the race. If Leclerc would have won that race, then okay, maybe the championship doesn't go any differently, but I think it's situations like that, given that Leclerc was in the driving seat for Ferrari for actually being able to compete, and that he didn't get the beneficial strategy, that he's wondering what's going on here, right? So, um, you know, Leclerc says that he's not expecting the first driver status or not demanding it, which, you know, there were some questions about that because of what happened in Brazil, where it was like, yo, Sainz let me through for the podium this time stuff get some extra points on the board and um, you know he's not demanding it but I'm sure he'd kind of like to have some favourable strategy especially when the well the things are going in his favour right and even Sainz offered repeatedly to the team to say hey look Charles in a better position here for the championship like you know what do you want me to do to help him but certain events and also wrong strategies allowed well didn't allow Ferrari to capitalise on anything like that but the risk that Ferrari currently have is Leclerc leaving in a couple of years Hamilton look we don't know how long Lewis is going to drive for for Mercedes but um, it could be another two years could be another three years who knows but at some point that seat will open up and I'm sure Leclerc if he hasn't won at a point well at that point with Ferrari the championship then he will heavily consider that type of move Ferrari want to lock him down and even um you know when they fired Vettel basically apparently due to John Elkan as is described here the president that basically got rid of Bonotto as well that was due to different visions on the future and trying to build around rising star Charles Leclerc and Bonotto said it was really difficult 
the fire said when he had to at the time. But um, this is kind of the implication here that the decision to get rid of Bonotto is at least in part due to wanting to ensure that Leclerc has a great environment, build around Leclerc, keep him on the team, keep the guy happy because if he's not happy, look, they don't want to lose Leclerc in 2024 after all the hard work they've done together by not being able to deliver him a championship. So they've got to do what they can to do exactly that, I think. And um, it's understandable that that's what they're potentially going to do. Now, if Vassar comes through, Fred Vassar, currently of Alfa Romeo, they've got a, a great existing relationship there with Leclerc. And he has been kind of clear in his words in the past that um, if he was to be the team principal, there would be, a, as he describes, a reference driver. He stated the other day, or this is actually a year ago, but it was talked about the other day, that um, you know pretty much every successful project, Ferrari with Schumacher, Renault Alonso, Red Bull Vettel, Red Bull Verstappen, Mercedes Hamilton, always they have the number one guy and um, you know the team is there to support the ventures of that driver. May not be the nicest way to do it, may not always be the best to your fight in the constructors, but in terms of winning the World Drivers' Championship, which is really what everyone cares about from you know an outside perspective, the teams want to win the constructors, of course. But in terms of getting any championship on the board for Ferrari, this might be what they have to do. Because to beat Red Bull and Max Verstappen, I don't really think you're going to do it unless you have either a number one driver or once the season plays out for a few races and one driver's in the ascendancy, then you start to be favouring them. That's what Mercedes have generally done in the past as well. And um, yeah, Gazetta even wrote a few days ago that when Fred Vasseur comes in, if he is coming in, still the favourite, then Leclerc will be the number one driver. They're not going to say this outright into the public, but seemingly that is indeed going to be the case. And uh, there's even been some questions about that this season, right? Because we saw at the start of the year, Verstappen and Perez were not on level pegging, but wasn't too far off. I think um, Verstappen was behind Perez for something like nine, ten sessions in a row across Monaco and Baku. And then the car, arguably, they developed the car in his favour, or at least, um, you know, they, they deny they did this. But, um, you know, it seems arguable that this is a possibility. But it does seem likely that this indeed is a possibility that the way they developed the car to, you know, make it effectively more oversteery is favouring Verstappen's driving style. Now, they don't seem to do this at Ferrari. Now, people have implied that, well, if they developed the car for science, because, you know, he's had a relatively good time to compare to Leclerc compared to how Perez is stacked up with Verstappen. But science has denied that they've done that, basically. But, you know, you could argue that next season, if this is the case, they'll be developing the car for Leclerc. And even Vasseur's had these words when they were, when he was with uh, Leclerc a few years ago at Sauber, saying, you know, Leclerc's basically a fantastic driver and probably will favour him if and when the time comes. So in terms of your thoughts on that in the comment section below, is this something Ferrari should do? It's obviously not ideal for science if that is the case, but, um, you know, it's a difficult one. To me, if you want to beat that Red Bull Max Verstappen combination, you've got to go all out. And if you're Ferrari, that probably means building around Leclerc, building the car for Leclerc, giving him the beneficial strategy when you can. Like, if they're serious about winning a championship, they might have to get serious about who their number one driver is. But Otto hasn't necessarily done that over the last couple of years, and maybe Fred Vassofi does come through, will do exactly that. A couple of things to mention before we close out. Some more spice hitting the timeline, as it always seems to. It's funny, really. The season ends. You think it's going to calm down a bit. Like, it never really does. Esteban Ocon and Alonso, they had quite the relationship last season. And, uh, well, Ocon says this about Alonso during the year. It's good that he's going to us in Martin and that we are going our own way. Honestly, the work was 98% on my back and 2% on his. I was overworked. I did all the development on the simulator, the marketing trips, etc. So quite the same integrity from Ocon. We know that these guys didn't always get on like a house on fire, let's say. And um, yeah, I mean, he seems to be pretty happy that indeed they're going their separate ways. But still, the battles on track, I'm sure, are going to be pretty spicy. Interesting though, right? Because like different drivers have different ways of operating. A guy like Sebastian Vettel, he'd be in there doing all the work all, all day, right? Alonso's a different driver. He turns up, he gets in the car, he tells you what he thinks, and then he heads off on his yacht or something. I don't know. Like um, different drivers have different ways of doing it. Now you could argue Alonso should have done more because, you know, Alonso's obviously not happy that he feels like he did all the work, not just for developing the car, but also marketing and stuff like this. Might not always be the case. I mean, look, he's going to say 90% to two. I'm sure Alonso has a different opinion of, um, you know, what this could be, but still pretty spicy nonetheless, because not only is it going to be entertaining between Ocon and Alonso next year, between Alpine and hopefully if Aston Martin have a solid car, but even between Ocon and his own teammate in Gasly, right? I mean, it's going to be immense that battle in what is probably still going to be the midfield next year. And even uh, Alonso in his first test for Aston Martin at the end of Abu Dhabi, Mike Crack said over there at Aston Martin, like, yeah, that was very impressive. So, um, you know, hopefully Aston have a decent car next season. They made some good progress. They are planning to win the uh, the Formula One World Championship within five years. That does seem slightly optimistic, but uh, we'll see. I at least respect the ambition because some of these teams out there are not, uh, you know, don't have this outright ambition to actually try and win something. 
they're just, you know, here for the banter, I guess. And that's kind of how Alonso felt at Alpine, and now more than likely a different story. So very much into it, your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.